Hi, I'm Rebecca Balcarso. Let's take a look at W. H. Auden's poem, Musée des Beaux-Arts. Now, Auden is a rock star of a 20th century poet. He's known for being a big thinker, a traveler, and of course, a writer. This poem is called Musée, meaning museum, day of beau, fine, beautiful arts. And arts is the same, Musée des Beaux-Arts. And it just means the fine art museum, and in particular, the art museum. And this is an important title because it tells us, aha, the speaker is at an art museum. And the whole poem refers to paintings that are in the museum. So let's get started. About suffering, they were never wrong, the old masters. How well they understood its human position. How it takes place while someone else is eating or opening a window, or just walking dully along. And that's the first four lines. So he's saying that the old masters knew a thing or two about suffering. And who are the old masters? Uh, they're not Jedi masters, <laughs> they're painters. The old Dutch masters who painted the paintings that the speaker is at the museum to see. So those painters knew something about suffering. Now we could expand that and say, well, the old thinkers, the old philosophers also knew about suffering. But the fact that the title is Museum of Fine Arts, and then the fact that he talks about poem or paintings throughout the poem does imply the old masters refer to the, the painters, the old master painters. So they were not wrong about suffering, how well they understood its human position, meaning how universal it is that all humans suffer. The human condition includes suffering. How it takes place while someone else is eating or opening a window or just walking dully along. So suffering happens even while other people continue their lives. They just do their mundane things. You know, they go to the store, they, you know, watch a YouTube video <laughs> while someone is suffering, right? And you've probably had this experience, you know, maybe there's been a death in, in your life, in your circle, and you can't believe that everyone else just is going on like nothing has happened. Because for you, something huge has happened. Your life will never be the same. But no one else realizes it. And that's the kind of thing that the master painters depicted in some of these paintings that the poet is looking at. So someone else is eating and opening a window and meanwhile you are suffering or you're the one opening a window eating and not noticing the suffering of others. The next section is a little tricky just but hold on we'll, we'll unpack it. <laughs> How when the aged are reverently passionately waiting for the miraculous birth there always must be children who did not specially want it to happen skating on a pond at the edge of the wood. They never forgot that even the dreadful martyrdom must run its course. Anyhow, in a corner, some untidy spot where the dogs go on with their doggy life and the torturer's horse scratches its innocent behind on a tree. Okay, so how? When the aged are reverently passionately waiting for the miraculous birth. Okay, so older people, people of age, aged people, are reverently hoping to, for a miraculous birth. So this could be read as just any baby being born and that older people care about that, whereas the children don't really care if it happens or not. Like, yeah, okay, sure, a baby, okay, what's the big deal? Um, and older people are all, oh, a baby, life human existence is going on and aren't they cute well okay so that's one way to look at this but remember we're in a museum so in the museum there's a painting that depicts Mary and Joseph standing in line to be counted in the census so the miraculous birth isn't referring to just any old birth it's the birth of Jesus now if you're familiar with the Christian context and in the Christian story, you know that Jesus is the, you know, becomes a prophet, becomes a messiah. Christianity is built all around the personage of Jesus, 
and he's thought of as a divine person, a great guru, etc. So the birth of this person is super important <laughs> for you know thousands of years, for thousands, millions of people. But the birth wasn't especially a big deal to some other people just hanging around in Bethlehem. Like the, the people in Bethlehem, they didn't know there was some special thing going on. They just see this lady with her husband, uh, the lady's riding a donkey, she's pregnant. Yeah, okay, good luck to her. But meanwhile, I'm over here. <laughs> or the children, they're busy skating on the pond. They don't particularly care. So back to the poem, how when the aged are reverently passionately waiting for the miraculous birth, and there were people who expected some special birth to be happening at this time. There always must be children who did not specially want it to happen, skating on a pond at the edge of the wood. Okay, so that explains that little section. The children are unaware that something really special is about to happen. The rest of the stanza they never forgot that even the dreadful martyrdom must run its course. What dreadful martyrdom are we talking about? Well, it could be Jesus' own crucifixion, but there was another martyrdom. The very first martyrs of Christianity were children because Jesus' birth was such a threat to the authorities, thinking that he would grow up to be a king in a political sense, not just in a spiritual sense, but that he would overthrow the government. So the government was threatened by the birth of this baby and ordered the murder of all the children in Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, under the age of two. So they thought, we are not sure which one is Jesus, we'll just kill them all. Now this is horrific tragedy, and you would think that something that huge would be... Uh, something you could never recover from. But the poem says, the, let's see, even the dreadful martyrdom must run its course. Okay, so even that horrible experience, tragic experience is going to end and people will go back to their lives. Even with their dead children in the street, they will bury them, they will grieve and mourn and go on because life seems to just relentlessly keep going and the sun keeps rising even though horrible things happen, even though terrible suffering is going on. Also, there's animals where the dogs go on with their doggy life. You know, they have their own life to live and um, they're just going on with their lives, not worrying about human suffering, especially on a grand scale. They're not, they're not aware, right, of what terrible suffering was going on when those children were killed, for example. Well, you know, they've got their bond, they're okay. And the same thing with this um, horse, the torturer's horse. So, okay, we have a, you know, let's say one of the soldiers who killed one of those children. Well, the horse doesn't care, right? The, you would think, like, all of creation would just stop and, you know, mourn the loss of these children. But you know what? The horse... Uh, you know, it's scratching its behind on a tree and it, it doesn't care and it can't really. So there's a sense here in the poem that nature goes on w without us or with us or whatever. You know, the, the dog, the horse, they just go on with their lives. Now let's look at the last stanza. This is where um, Auden specifically refers to a particular painting by name, and the name of the painting is Icarus, and Bruegel is the artist, so he says, in Bruegel's Icarus, for instance, how everything turns away quite leisurely from the disaster. The plowman may have heard the splash, the forsaken cry, but for him it was not an important failure. The sun shone, as it had to, on the white legs disappearing into the green water and the expensive, delicate ship that must have seen something amazing, a boy falling out of the sky, had somewhere to get to, and sailed calmly on. So, this is talking about the painting Icarus, and you can see it online. It's 
got a huge plowman, a guy who's plowing his fields, a ship that's very elaborate, and then in a tiny little area there's these little legs, and that's Icarus. The, the title of the painting is referring to this little tiny, you know, spot on the canvas that's so small and insignificant. Why is that? Okay, so the painting is showing Icarus and his fall. This refers to a Greek myth where, or story or whatever, where um, Daedalus and Icarus, father and son, are trapped in a maze. And they're in the maze with a minotaur, which is a scary being, and they want to escape. So Daedalus, the father, uh, constructs wings so that they can escape. And they make the wings out of wax and feathers, and it works. They fly out of the maze, and Father Daedalus has told his son Icarus, do not fly too close to the sun because your wings will melt and you'll fall. But Icarus does fly too close to the sun, does not heed his father's warning. He does fall, and this painting depicts the artist's idea of how Icarus fell into the sea. And his little white legs are sticking out, and it looks very insignificant in this huge canvas, but that's the poignant suffering moment in the painting. Everybody else is going on with their lives. So just like the other painting, everyone's going on with their lives, not caring that Mary and Joseph are there, real special people. <laughs> and here we have Icarus dying, and you know, the plowman's busy with his uh, plow going in the dirt, and the ship is busy sailing wherever they're going. And even if they noticed the boy, there was a forsaken cry, or maybe there was, uh, you know, the, just like the strange sight of a boy falling from the sky. Still, they can't do anything about it. Uh, it doesn't really affect them directly. So the plowman goes on, the ship goes on, and Auden even says, uh, the ship sailed calmly on. So it's... It's not even perturbed or upset that this boy has just lost his life. So what is the message of this poem? <sighs> Probably there are several ways to look at it, and you'll have your own way. Uh, one message might be that suffering is something that we just do privately and the world doesn't care. Another way to look at it would be to say that nature is going on and forward and doesn't stop for the private individual suffering. Um, maybe that's comforting actually, that our suffering doesn't just make the world stop, but maybe it's not comforting. Maybe it's really annoying and, and angering that, well, the world should stop. You know, there was a death in my family and and how can anybody just keep going on? Like, like the world is the same and the world is not the same. Or maybe, Maybe that's, that's a temporary feeling, and that time, in its march forward, forward, will heal that, and just as it healed the martyrs, the children being killed. And, and maybe that, is that good? Is it bad to be healed? I mean, aren't, are you ever supposed to forget? But then what if, what if you can't go forward because you're paralyzed with grief? So, so much to think about here. It looks like Odin is saying that those old Dutch masters who painted these paintings, they did know that suffering seems to go unnoticed sometimes, oftentimes, and that it seems insignificant to others. It's more significant to a very small group of people. And what are we to make of that? I, I guess I'd leave it to you to decide. Thank you for joining me for Musée des Beaux-Arts by W.H. Auden, and I hope you'll watch another video.